Greetings. I'm Bill Kladke of the Greater Baltimore Community Housing Resource Board, and I'd like to welcome you to today's edition of Neighborhood Beat. Our guest today is Mr. Louis S. Diggs, who's an historian of African American settlements. And Louis is here, if I may call you Louis. Of course. But Louis is here to talk to us about various African American settlements in our area. So, welcome. Why, thank you, Dr. Kladke, and I would like to call you Bill if it's okay. Please, yeah, please. Well, please. I really appreciate your having me here. Uh, Certainly. Because I think it's just wonderful that I'm given an opportunity to share with the wider community the history of these African-American communities That's in great. Baltimore County. That's great. Well, thank you for being here. Let's first talk about why did you get into this? How did you get into this? Well, Bill, you know I retired from the military 20 years and retired from federal government 20 years. And you know, when I fully retired, I was teaching a class uh, once at Catonsville High School. I was a substitute teacher. I really felt that uh, they needed uh, an African-American mentor. Right. And I was very accustomed to working with children. Uh, part of my 20-year career, a military career, I was Sergeant Major of the ROTC at Morgan College, and we were creating officers out there. So I felt comfortable with kids. Right. And I was in the D.C. public school system for 20 years as well. And anyhow, I was teaching this class uh, of, of how to research your roots and, and about communities. And when the class was over, the black children of Catonsville came to me and said, Mr. Diggs, I, we simply could not find a history. They said they had gone to the library, to the historical society. They said they really couldn't find anything. Well, what a shame. Yes, it was a shame. And they asked me if I could find the history for them. And you know yourself, Bill, that's a challenge that any, any concerned adult would, would take. Right. So I took the kids up on it. And even though I'm not from Catonsville, I married a girl from there, been out there almost 50 years, um, I, I began to delve into the history of that community and found tons of history. And I was able to put it together in, in a booklet form, a booklet called It All Started on Winter's Lane. Uh, I got a grant from uh, Baltimore, uh, from the Maryland Humanities Council because I had to give it away. And it clearly says it's book, but not a book. I took it to the book form. But um, I gave these kids um, a really good idea of what their history was like from slavery up, up to the present day. That's wonderful. What, what was their reception? They were absolutely carried away with it. I bet. I was carried away with it more than them, to be honest with you, because... I felt that I shouldn't stop on this one book, and I, I went on to do uh, to do others. Yeah, I know that 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 you've received some grants that have helped you along in this too, which oh, yeah. is really commendable. That 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 some of our government agencies have have done this to, yeah. to encourage this because it's a it's a shame and it's a, it's a vestige of the extreme segregation and the prejudice that was characteristic of our society back how many years. And it still, to a certain extent, is characteristic and needs, needs to be fought. That's true. But it's but wonderful I, they step to the plate. Yeah, especially the Baltimore County government. I have to give them credit. The uh, Office of Community Conservation. They said to me when I approached them about a grant, and after they looked at what I did, and they said, well, you know, our job is to preserve history right. of these communities in Baltimore County. And what better way can you preserve history than put it in book form? I... I, I especially believe that your your books are interesting and and I know you're not making any money on these books it's it's a real yeah, true service that you're doing to the community uh, which we thank you for but I think that what's important to for our viewers to understand is is that these books are not just writing history they are real living history positively every one of my books I delve very deeply in oral history right. from seniors as a matter of fact, Bill, I'm sure you know about African American history. I know you know about it. And you know that many historical things are never recorded, never documented. Right. African Americans, at least in Baltimore County, from slavery on, they were too busy trying to eck out a living. Uh, you know, uh, who, who had time to document things? Right. Besides, I found an awful lot of them couldn't read nor write. Right, and so and, how could they do it? And careers in in academics, at least in 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 the book publishing side of academics, were closed to them. That's true, very very true. And so the histories that were being written of the presidential memoirs and all the rest of this stuff were never really written on 
the day-to-day -day lives of African Americans. Hey, boy, you're absolutely right there. My goodness. But uh, I feel very, very good about this. Here in Baltimore County, we have 40 designated historic African American communities. Where are they located? They're located uh, all over Baltimore County. Uh, the, the whole spectrum of the county is is pockmarked with these uh, settlements, mm -hmm. and 99 percent of them rose up from from slavery. And these uh, five and, and uh, books that I've written bring most of them up, uh, you know, from the slavery era. So uh, my goal, though, is to document the history of all 40. I've done about 20 now. Mm -hmm. And I just hope I have enough uh, in this old seventy-year-old body to <laughs> to finish doing the other the other. Uh, I hope so too. The 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 other interesting thing about African American settlements is is that there's a lot of suburbanites in Baltimore County that are living right on top yeah, of African American you settlements. Boy, and you are so <laughs> and they don't know it. No idea at all. <laughs> Some give of give an example. Give an example. Hey, an example is uh, Chad Laney. Uh -huh. out in Green Spring Valley, where the ultra-rich have always lived. They go up and down Green Spring Valley from uh, Rice's Town Road up to Villa Julie College and never know they go through an African-American community. Hmm. That little community of Chattelaney, uh, which is located, it begins on the corner of um, Green Spring Valley Drive and what was Railroad Avenue, I don't know what it is now, uh -huh. and then for a few more blocks. That's a small enclave of blacks. You can really tell that you're in this community when uh, I know you're familiar with that road when you right. come off of say Rice's Town Road you make uh, a turn on to uh, Green Spring Valley mm -hmm. let's say you're going out to Villa Julie College well when you as you go down Rice's Town Road you make a significant bend to the left you have got to be very careful to make that bend as soon as you uh, uh, have finished that bend there's a small white church on the right hand side you're now entered uh, Chatelaney hmm. And those blacks have been there since slavery. How many folks live there? Not too many now. Not too many. I think there are no more than uh, three or four black families. Uh, but, but they're the <coughs> excuse me, they're the descendants of of the slaves. Yes, that were there. Yes, indeed, slaves that uh, people not aware of uh, up on Rice's Town Road, where African Americans and others go to weddings in uh, oh, what's the name of that big reception hall? Right. Gray Rock. Right. Gray Rock. One gentleman whose name is, uh, uh, he's a Diggs, too, and I can't think of his name. Mr. Diggs. Mr. Diggs. Uh, he is a cousin of the black superintendent, first female superintendent, um, Alice Penderhues. Uh -huh. People think she comes from Baltimore, but she was born and raised right there in Chattelaney. He took me up there to show where his family came from slavery. And would you believe right behind that huge uh, mansion, there's an attached slave quarter still there. Really? I had no idea until he mentioned to me. Then when we came back down Rice's Town Road, we made a shortcut through Craddock Lane, uh -huh. and uh, sure enough, there was another original slave quarter in a place called, um, oh, goodness sake. Uh -huh. you, you, you can't miss it. Right, uh, right. Let's talk about your other books. Okay. Um, in, in the second half of this show, we're going to talk about your, your, your newest two books. Right. But your first book was Winter's Lane, and I think your second book was uh, Holding On to Our Heritage? Second was Holding On to uh -huh. Our Heritage. And Holding On to Our Heritage, this documented the history of two historic African-American communities. One in uh, Rice's Town mm -hmm. is called Bond Avenue, truly been there since slavery. And the other is just five miles north in a community called Boring. Uh, the small segment in that boring community is a little black enclave called Piney Grove. The mm -hmm. church is still there. No African Americans are there today. Uh, they, a lot of them, some still own property there, but no African Americans. And that's why I titled the book Holding On to the Heritage, because they are struggling to hold on to the heritage. Right. The, the little black church is there, but no, no African Americans. Yes, so it's just suburbanized. Uh, in a sense. In a sense, yeah. And then, of course, down on Bond Avenue, uh, Bond Avenue, uh, people there, their uh, ancestors coexisted with uh, slaves, especially from slaves of the Worthingtons. There is one lady, uh, Annie Milligan, uh, I think she's 80 and 90 years old now, mm -hmm. and she shared stories with me from her grandfather, 
mm. who talked about he coexisted with slaves uh, doing some kind of work and would come home and mention to his children and grandchildren about right. you know life uh, there and then one of the really unique things that happened in Bond Avenue back in 1834 uh, a few years before slavery ended right. there was a little church there called Asbury Chapel today it's the very large Town United Methodist Church they permitted the slaves to come and practice their religion and the historian of that church gave that's me the wonderful. class list from that started the little church that's on uh, Bond Avenue now St. Luke's United Methodist Church that's wonderful that's yeah, wonderful really, really good history I, I know that that um, uh, some of our viewers I'm sure would be interested in, in finding out how they could get a hold of your books I know that they're they're they are for sale they are for sale I don't have too many of them in the bookstores to be honest with you uh -huh. I simply refuse to pay that 40 to 50 percent of the selling price uh, of uh -huh. the book besides <laughs> I take a, a big loss on right. these books as it so is. how can somebody get in, get in contact uh, with you they can call me by telephone 410-747-6812 right. or can go to my website which is www.lewisdiggs all one word dot com and they can order the book I do not charge posted this way the person that gets my book always get an autographed copy and it's like getting it in a bookstore except you don't have to pay postage right right so mm -hmm. and uh, so it's a little cheaper actually actually yes yeah actually. and it's valuable because of the autograph <laughs> absolutely absolutely and all of your books are available by by contact oh know. yes yes okay. all of them are available. okay um, after the break we're going to talk about uh, um, your most recent couple books okay and uh, and we'll see we'll see some shots from some pictures that you've gathered from the uh, in the process but I know you have pictures all through these books too. oh yes they're full yeah. of pictures and full of interviews as a matter of fact Bill on the pictures I have in excess of 6,000 pictures of black life in Baltimore wow. County I, I, I put them on display primarily at an African American culture festival that we have in Towson uh -huh. September of the year but I take them uh, all over and when I go out for lectures and I am available to lecture uh, 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 anywhere and those that can provide tables I share the photographs uh, with them that's wonderful let's let's talk more about it after the break sure uh, we, um, after the break we're going to be continuing our discussion with Lewis Diggs a historian of African-American settlements and Lewis is going to talk about uh, his, his most recent books uh, one of which is is published in January of 2003 Stay with us, and we'll be right back. Without proper preservation and conservation, the rich ethnic and cultural heritage of Maryland could just dry up and blow away. Contact the Maryland Department of Housing and Community Development and find out how you can be a part of history. Call 410-514-7661 or visit our website at www.MarylandHistoricalTrust.net. Welcome back. In this segment, we continue our discussion with Lewis Diggs, an historian of African-American settlements in our area. Let me talk about a couple of his latest books. and In fact, one that's still in manuscript, right, Lewis? Right. My latest book, uh, it's actually going to be titled From the Meadows to the Point, uh -huh. and it documents the history of this marvelous community. It's called Turner Station, down in the far southwest corner of, uh, of Baltimore County. Uh -huh. And the community, African-American community, that was on Sparrows Point from the 1880s until the 